In a previous video, I explained Stockfish 13, how to use it, and I made a benchmarking uh, migrate so Stockfish 12. Here, I'm gonna go over a game, one that Stockfish 13 with white against the previous version. So I set up an opening position and I chose a Sicilian, specifically a Sicilian dragon, because I wanted to see the tactical possibilities and how Stockfish 13 would eventually be better than Stockfish 12. So here in this position, um, now the engines are on their own, there's no more opening book, they have to play the Sicilian dragon. Stockfish 13 picked Bishop E3, which is the main line, and now Stockfish 12 play A6, well, typically, most players will play bishop g7 or maybe knight c6. But as anyway, they transposed after f3, bishop g7 was played. And this is a fairly common position. And black play h5. And we have a dragon with kings most likely to go on opposite wings. So we have a very sharp game here. First interesting move, g4. Um, white wants to attack. Open up here because the king is in the center. The game continued and here, Stockfish 12 took over here. That was probably a mistake because opening the h5 will benefit white as we will see. Probably a4 was a critical move and probably white would have played something like this. So instead, black took here, white took back, and now we can see that e5 is threatened and the king is in the center, so black castled. And here we see that the h5 is definitely a concern. Therefore, I wasn't sure why black decided to exchange on g4 before. So this position is better for white. Let's continue. Attacking f6. Black replied by e5. And here, in this position, white played the brilliant move g5. Definitely Stockfish 12 missed that, and Stockfish 13 found this queen sack. Black took, white took, and now we can see that that bishop is super strong. The rook is coming here, the king is near getting made it. So here, black had to take, because if you were to try to escape, you come here, and then you would have a winning promotion here. So, black took. We have two bishops for the queen, but we have rook h8, which is the threat. So here the king escape, bishop d5. Definitely attacking while we still have rook h8 coming. So the king moved. So why did black not move the queen? Let's see. If you do this, you do check, you come here, and you have definitely the king is in a mating net. So you probably have this threat next, and that king is not going to survive. So instead, black is back the queen, and here, you could take here, but much stronger, Rook h7. Why is that? If you try to save the queen again, you do check. The king will be here. And now beautiful rook h1. You're threatening back when checkmate. If the king moves, you come here. And if the king moves, checkmate over here. So here, the only reply is here and you lose the queen. Or you can even play this and you have a winning position for white. So therefore here, we're threatening rook f7 and we cannot move the queen. So black defended f7. You take the queen finally with white and you have one extra piece. So at this stage, it's completely won. I'm just gonna show very clearly how the game ended by replaying the game.
choosing checkmate and in this position black resign so one of the idea was here black had to take otherwise you come here and you have checkmate everything is covered so clearly there was an easy conversion so the key moment in my opinion in this game was when black played queen f4 black thought that they could defend obviously if you move the queen then you can play rook c8 or 97 and you have a game but instead of retreating the queen on e5 white found g5 and this is a brilliant sacrifice so in this position even though you only have one extra bishop you have a winning position with white so stunning performance by stockfish 13 and thank you for watching